Welcome back to another weekly GMBN Tech Show. Coming up on this week's show, we check out some of those new YT bikes, including the new Jeff C, which of course has a pretty crazy advertising campaign surrounding it. We also check out the new Bike Yoke products, including their, uh, their Rubber Willy for a bike, which as far as I know is a first. And of course, there's all the great stuff from you guys. So first up in the news, gravity focused German bike company YT have done a whole range revamp. So as you imagine, there's not too much new, but there's some amazing new colorways in there. Uh, the two is the one you can see on the screen now. Look at the color of that, that is absolutely beautiful. So there's a few spec changes as you'd imagine, but as ever, they're offering great value for money. Now something that does please me is if they're sticking to the guns with their 11 speed. So as known before, I've mentioned it, they've had the E13 cassettes on there with that tiny little nine tooth, as opposed to the 10 tooth that you see on Eagle and now on the Shimano 12 speed system. So they're sticking with 11 speed, which is quite a cool way of doing things. So as always, the Cat Pro really is their sort of the fundamental bike in the range. It's available in 27 half inch wheel, 29 inch wheel, alloy car, Carbon, so many different models and colors it's quite incredible and sizes from extra small all the way through to double XL so pleases me because double XL actually fits it's a proper size bike for a tall person uh, but like I say they offer all the way down to an extra small as well so they're not leaving anyone out now the 2S of course is a super popular downhill bike available in alloy and in carbon 27 and a half inch wheels although there has been talk of of course the 29 inch one which we did see Aaron Gwynn on last year and I spotted this picture up on Instagram and this is actually owned by the CEO of YT Bikes himself so um, could that be coming soon? I think it might be. We'll find out on that in the near future I'm sure. And of course the Jeff C is back and the Jeff C has been revised quite heavily so at a glance it might seem similar but actually it's quite different of course i had that rowdy advertising campaign completely different to what anyone else is doing by using a hollywood a-lister i mean a true a-lister christopher walken doing what christopher walken does best and that is a speech a good bit of heavy dialogue talking about his friend jeffsy so if you haven't seen it tune in and check that out very alternative um very yt actually as it's becoming apparent the way to do things but check out the bike so at a glance it looks fairly similar it's 27 and a half and 29 inch models uh, the sizing is completely revised. So on the uh, on the 29ers, the reach goes from 430 up to 510 on that double XL, and on the 27.5 it's 422 to 502. So a really really good broad range of sizing there. They're longer and they're slacker. They've got less places on the frame for mud to gather and collect. On there, there's a flip chip so you can keep the bottom bracket lower and head angle slacker or vice versa if you prefer that feel or if it suits the way you ride. And also, which is quite cool, have a look at this. So on screen now is the YT Thirstmaster. So it's a water bottle and cage developed in conjunction with Fidlock, which was a company we checked out at Eurobike last year. It was either magnetic buckles and magnetic water bottle mounts. Now this is dedicated especially for this bike because it's really hard to fit with that shock positioning to fit a water bottle in there. So it's been specially designed so you can have a water bottle. Granted, it's not as big as others out there, but it does mean you can carry water in that position rather than the vulnerable under the down tube position, which of course is subject to mud and dog eggs and the other stuff that flicks off the front wheel. Now also something I did notice that they write in a small print, I'd have to see this and try it myself, but they say you can also fit a beer can in there. So that's pretty cool. It might be a bit shaken up by the time you get to the end of your run and the time you want to enjoy it, but uh, it's pretty cool nonetheless. Last week, Neil and I went over to the Canyon factory over in Koblenz in Germany just to check out some cool new stuff that's around the corner, uh, which I can't tell you about, but I'll get to that in a minute. But what was really fascinating was we had a whole tour of all their facility, the test, their R&D, the product testing, where they test stuff, fatigue testing until it breaks. And then we went to the actual production line as well. Oh my God, this place was insane. So I'm just gonna throw a few shots up on the screen just to uh, whet your appetite for some cool content that's gonna come later this week. In fact, if you tune into GMBN and GMBN Tech at the end of this week, you're gonna see something very, very cool from Canyon Bikes. That's all I can say for now, but look at the amount of stock in this place. I've never seen anything like it. So we got to walk around the warehouse when there was a, it was basically like a lunch break for all the forklift drivers. Otherwise, you pretty much can walk around in there because of how fast and how frequent they move around. Now these guys have got like onboard sat navs, especially for where they have to collect stuff from the aisles, where it has to be delivered to, because there's so much stuff going on at once here. The logistics 
is seriously, seriously impressive for how they work as a company. Um, absolutely blown away by it. And actually, I want to go back there and do a more detailed factory visit at some point. So maybe later this year, I'll walk you through the process of how a bike is put together there because literally blew my mind. Unbelievable. Next up is Tinker Juarez, well, David Juarez, a legendary cross-country racer. He has a custom set of handlebar grips coming out made by ODI. Now, they're going to be called the Dreadlock. So here's a shot of them on Tinker's Instagram page. So these are really quite cool. So as we know, all the cross-country racers are really favoring the lighter foam style grip. This is essentially a foam style grip, but they're a lock-on style. So super easy to get on the bar. You don't have to faff around with hairspray and other stuff. And they look really, really cool. So there's gonna be lots of different colors available. And I'm guessing that they're gonna be super light as well. So they're made from ODI's exclusive air compound for reduced weight and improved vibration damping. They've got a contoured surface for improved comfort on longer rides, or so say, ODI. Uh, and it's version 2.1 of the lock-on system, so they're 100% slip free. They look cool. Legendary retro component manufacturer pulls components from the States. Yep, that company that made the love levers um, and that amazing rebuildable rear derailleur, which also came in a raster color once upon a time. They're making loads of cool modern accessories for bikes, including this dropper post remote. Now this is not just any dropper post remote. This is made like Paul's component stuff. So I'm talking like the highest possible quality. It's available in loads of cool anodized colors, including limited edition anodized purple. It's got twin cartridge bearings on the lever. So this thing has a seriously smooth and non rattly operation on it. And it's cable operated, of course. And it's gonna work with both types, the type that uses either the nipple or the clamp at that end. So it's an absolutely fantastic looking little bit of kit. And look how neat it is. Oh, partially in love with that. German manufacturer Bike Yoke that of course make bike yokes for specialized bikes in order to uh, retrofit different shocks to them. And they make a whole bunch of other stuff, including that really cool seat post I checked out on one of the earliest tech shows. Yeah, so they make some really cool little components, including this, the uh, the Willy. So it's essentially a rubber boot that sits over your seat collar, uh, forms a tight seal so you can't get anything in there, which is gonna make your post creak, or more importantly, get moisture into the frame. Really simple, they retail for about seven euros. Um, and it's essentially just a rubber sort of sheath for your uh, for your bike. It does make me laugh though, looking at the sight, it says, please note that um, the appearance of Willy depends on the saddle clamp used on your bike. So I assume um, some willies are gonna be lumpier than others. Uh, and also says, um, don't forget your rubbers. And lastly in news, um, not so much news, this is just a really cool looking bike. So Ben Deakin, a friend of ours, he races for Pivot and for DMR bikes and he's got this custom painted Pivot downhill bike with this insane paint job painted by uh, Image Design. Um, this thing looks a bit more like Miami Beach than Bournemouth or wherever Ben's from down south, but wow. What a cool looking bike. It's, it's certainly Larry enough that it does match his mouth indeed, but um, just look at this thing. Dude, that is an awesome looking bike. Now it's time for Bike Cave. You know the drill, this is where you keep your bikes, where you lock them up safe and where you tinker with them to make them better and of course patch them up after rough rides. So please take some photos of where you guys keep your bikes. Um, it could be the back of a van, it could be a garden shed, um, it could be could be anywhere. Wherever it is you keep your bikes that you like to refer to as a bike cave, show us. Um, and in particular, if you want to video anything and do a video entry, do that because we have had some awesome ones just before Christmas. So I expect some other brilliant ones for you guys soon. So the upload link is right down the bottom there on the screen. It's super easy to use. Um, get them in. So first up is from Kyle this week and Kyle is located in Newark. So shared space at its finest. One day it's just a normal garage. Next day it's a noisy wood, wood shop with saws and sanders going on. Then somehow it turns into a bike shop with all friends sending their bikes over to get cleaned. Nice work. Wow, okay, so you've got some serious kit tucked away in here. Two big old benches across the back there, work toolbox in the corner. Looks like you've got some beer coolers, redundant up on the top shelf. I guess that's because it's January. No one drinks in January, do they? Um, nice setup you've got. Decent work stand height as well. And of course, more importantly, you've got your bike in there. Uh, looks great. Nice, clean setup. Well, I bet it's hard to keep clean with all the woodworking stuff. Absolute pain with all the dust. I guess you have to take care of that of extraction stuff, but very nice. Nice, roomy, nice and light in there. Thanks, Kyle, for that. Next up is from Jacob in Australia. Hi, Dolly, this is my bike cave. It's my bedroom. 
Not the biggest space, but it does work for me. The bikes I've got are a 2009 uh, United BMX, a trials bike that I don't know much about. Maybe you might uh, know. I'll have to show that to Martin because he knows everything about trials bikes. Um, a 2000 GT XCR 3000 and my trusty 2007 Giant Glory. Very nice. Yeah, I do recognise that. Yeah. So um, I've seen some other pictures of this. You sent in for top mods. Nice. So you get your stuff from Chain Reaction all the way over in Australia. That's mad. They ship everywhere, don't they? Yeah, you got your Shimano spare parts up there. Always like a well-stocked bike cave. Yeah, there's that old GT. That's quite cool, actually. So using an iDrive system, so the independent uh, drivetrain. Very cool setup, that. But nice setup you've got there, Jacob. Nice and clean. Uh, much better use for a bedroom than uh, putting a bed in it, that's for sure. I'll tell you what, we've got a winner this week. So Raymond in Garrison, New York. He says, this is my garage. It's small, but... But tidy is it clear uh, shares a space with a 1986 GSXR and a 1969 Camaro. And the first picture I have on my screen is the Camaro with the Cannondale on the back. Dude, that is that is badass. That is a seriously nice car. Um completely ignoring the bike cave stuff for a second because that's just wow. And look at your look at your garage. That is awesome, man. That is a serious roll cab. It is huge. It's probably about as tall as me. Awesome setup. Nice Cannondale as well, by the way. Three full face helmets down the back there. Let's have one mountain bike, one motocross bike, and a road motorbike one, too. Seriously clean in there. I can tell you obviously worship that car. Um, you can definitely tell that by the amount of cleaning products there are, there are on the shelf there with various waxes and things. Um, oh man, yeah. Super impressed with that. It looks, looks great. Bike's really nice. You've got those enormous flat pedals on. I totally forget the brand, but there are a set floating around. Someone sent a set to us, but since we moved floors, I haven't been able to locate them uh, to have a look at them myself. But uh, God, there's the front of the car. Oh man, that is dirty. Seriously nice. Thanks for sending that one in. Next up is from Mike. Um, I'm riding a Ghost Kato FS5, but in two or three months, I'm gonna get a better bike. So my bike is kept in my room because then I can have all my stuff in a nice warm room and I can work on my bike whenever I want and whatever the weather's doing. Yeah, but it's definitely the way, but flipping it, you have to keep your stuff clean, especially in a room of that color. Lots of light colors in there, so you must really be meticulous in the way you clean your bike. I kind of guess that as well, because you've got loads of muck off on display down there. So always good to see that someone looks after their bike. Plenty of tools. Looks really stylish, actually. I think you've done, done pretty good with that. Now you've got your body armor hanging up. Nice, and there's your tools on the tool shelf. Cool, so you've got WD-40, assembly paste, always good. Looks like you've got some thread lock at the back, I do approve. Um, awesome stuff, Mike. Thanks for sending that in. I think we're out of the bike cave for this week, so please continue to take some pictures of your own bike caves. Send them in. And now it's time for Rewind, our retro part of the show. Uh, we want you guys to send us in anything retro you have that's to do with mountain biking. It could be some old Pace Forks like that, it could be an old Troy Elite original helmet like that, it could be an old Camelback, it, better still it could be a whole bike, it could be images of yourselves racing, or perhaps you've seen some old stuff on another website or somewhere out there and you want to know a bit more about it. So whatever it is, let us know and send your stuff in. Details are right at the bottom of the screen, as usual. So first up, this week is from Rob in San Francisco, and this, <laughs> this is really pleased me. So a set of original Manitou forks. Here's one for you, Dolly. I acquired these for free some time ago. It's non-functioning, but I thought it'd be a nice wall hanger. Got around right into cleaning them up and polishing them. It now hangs on a wall where I store my bikes. Um, well, yeah, they're, they're, they're Manitou, so on the inside, the spring stacks are actually elastomer rubber, which were famously Poor, but back in the day they were like state of the art. I mean the construction of them, second to none, absolutely beautiful. Um, I love those original graphics on them. The second version of the Fortnite Man 2 2 where the graphics went up the side of the legs, just didn't look as good. They were the original ones. Tomac used to run them, and Tomac was the best. So, um, man, lovely looking for. Gutted you got them for free, man. That's, um, yeah, I, I want to sit, but. I'd do nothing with them either. I'd hang them on the wall to look good too. But uh, but hey, that's all good. Next up is from Joshua in Carson. So what you got here? So an amazing bike, a 1999 GT LTS 1000 bike, 21 and a half inch. Um, so let's look at some of the kit on here. Right, so you've got early haze brakes on here. Nice. 
Let's have a look at that. So Astro Bar, a Zonic Orc stem on there. Nice, avid speed dial, brake levers. Um, there's that classic frame with interrupted sort of seat tube there that curves all the way back. And then you've got that 100% American made, custom butted 6061 heat treated aluminum. Um, that's when they were made in the US, of course, and not always made in the US these days, but um, I think you find the quality of frames coming out of Taiwan and other Asian factories is absolutely stunning, so there's nothing to worry about there if you don't have a US made one. And look at that rear shock, so Fox Vanilla Air R. Oh, man, look how old that thing looks. But it's funny, because that's actually a trunnion mounted shock, something that we're seeing quite a lot these days, especially with the metric system. Uh, for different reasons, this particular shock is trunnion mounted, so it means basically the mount can allow the shock to move up and down within the frame, which of course gives you a steeper or slacker geometry at seat angle, raises and lowers the bottom bracket height, so actually quite advanced for when it came out. So that bike design was a four bar pivot, a slightly different layout to other bikes out there like Specialized FSR and stuff, but it worked really, really well. Really good bike, the LTS, still like them now. Um, oh, look at that rear brake, look how old that caliper looks. Flipping X, that's a cable operated, but it looks like a hydraulic caliper. Man, I don't quite remember that, that particular version. I've seen other companies have done similar systems, but not that exact one. And there you go. So the actual um, the pivot system on this one was better than the earlier ones. My friend had one of the ones with the titanium, sort of the, the die cast upper link there and uh, it had big bushes in it instead of bearings and after a while if it got a bit dry it would squeak so we get down the trail on its back end and be like <laughs> sound like an old donkey wheezing but uh, but it looked cool xtr rear derailleur on there yeah so that's one of the later derailleurs in fact i, I had one in that color um always wanted the original what was it 95 96 oh, i can't remember now these days no it wasn't 93 94 must have banged me head Looking good though, dude. Even for a massive one, it still looks pretty good. Quite a cool old bike. Nice to see, plenty of images. Thanks for taking these pictures. It makes a big difference to the show when everyone supplies images. Next up is from Mark in Bournemouth. Now look at this bad boy. So 1994 Kona Kilauea and a 1996 Kona Kilauea. Man, so they look almost, they are exact spec from the old days. Wow. Okay, so the 1994, Kona Kilauea is a two year faithful restoration. Everything as factory except for the rims. Uh, love it to bits, only take it out on the dry days. Um, it's great fun. My 1996 Kona Kilauea, uh, I had it for some years, but we've sat idle since the early 2000s. So some replacement parts still in use all year round. Race it in the Mulvans Classic in 2018. Nice, I probably saw you there at some point. Um, race mountain bike since 1991, starting off in the lovely Alpine Stars Almega DX, yes. I remember those very clearly, always wanted one of those. Uh, I was racing in the same era as you. I think I would have had a Muddy Fox about that time and I got a Saracen a bit after that. Um, so I've been involved with mountain biking for a long time, uh, but after hanging up my mountain bike XC Race Wales in 2003, returned to mountain biking in 2015 on a modern 29 and very quickly returned to good results for me. 12th overall in Vets category in 2016, first season back at regional level. Surprise and a highlight. Dude, I tell you what, that's really inspirational. Um, lovely bikes as well, really nice to see that, especially that 94 one, I've got to say. But uh, the 96 is, uh, you know, it's just as nice frame to be honest. And you've got, what they, the RC36s on there, the Evos perhaps. Um, profile stem, yeah, loads of cool kit on there. Nice to see that stuff. And really cool to hear that you had such a break from mountain biking, you came straight back in and you got on with it. Amazing stuff. Okay, now this is an interesting one. So this is from Nigel in Western Australia. Um, after you're watching New Year's Eve video, I'm wondering if you'd be interested in having one of the original Shock Quiz prototypes to hang up in your studio. Yes, please, I would love one. Um, so only five were ever made in order to prove the concept and to be featured in the media when Shock Quiz was launched. They're just packed away as storage in my office. If you want one, I can send it over. And here's a shot of one. Dude, I didn't even know they looked like that. Uh, Nigel, please, if you could send one over, I'd be forever grateful. I'd absolutely love to see one of these in the flesh and I'd quite happily display that here. Um, yeah, awesome, thank you. Uh, I'd reimburse you for the postage if you send it over, that'd be awesome to see it. Um, thank you. And now we're on to top mods. 
This is the section of the show where we check out all the modifications and improvements and hacks and stuff that you do to your bikes to make them a bit different to the ones you could buy on the shelves or more importantly, a bit different to your mate's bikes. Anything counts that you can do to improve your bike. It could be a new set of tires, it could be a new set of pedals, it could be some tape somewhere on the bike to silence some chain slab. Whatever it is, take some photos, tell us what you've done and be proud of it. Send them in to us and we love displaying them on the show. So the link right there to the uploader, as with all the other content, get involved, be part of the GMBN Tech community. So first week, this is an especially good one. I love the title of this as well. It says, Midlife Crisis Build. So this is from Martin in Corsham. And now Corsham's just up the road from the office. So I actually know a few people who ride out that way. So chances are I've probably bumped into Martin at some point. Um, a, few years, a few months back, I was watching some guys riding dirt jumps in a barn as I was stood covered in mud and rain. This got me thinking about it and a desire to have to learn to jump properly. I ride with clips on all my bikes and pull up with my feet. Also, it looked warmer and drier for this time of year. Um, I take it that barn you're talking about is a 417 project. Um, just taking a wild guess at that. Just before Christmas, I found a second-hand GT bump and uh, bought it with a view to doing up over a few months. Well, escalated a bit quicker than that. So I stripped it down to the frame, built it back up, replacing nearly all of the parts. I like what you've done here. So you saved a bit of money in second hand and then just spent all the money. So that's cool. Got to spend money on something, may as well make it something good like bikes. I changed the old cable disc brakes to SRAM level teal and routed the front through the head tube. Nice, so you can learn some bar spins on there. I converted it to single speed and installed a chunky half-link chain. Good work. Uh, the forks were swapped from stock Suntour to an old school pair of RockShox Argyles. And I swapped the, the uh, wheels over to some Hope Hubs with Stan's rims. To finish it off, I added a nice pair of death grips onto a nukeproof bars and a pair of XT flats. There are a few screw-ups along the way, but I worked it all out and I have my own midlife crisis equivalent of buying a sports car. Hope you like it as much as I do. Dude, I love it. I think it's great that you bought a perfectly good bike that you could have just ridden and learned to jump on and you totally changed it to make it your own personal bike. That's what it's all about. Even if it does involve spending it of money, but it's all good fun, isn't it? I'll tell you what, the tan balls with that purple frame, they look mint. That was really, really good. Whole bike looks good. Yeah, well impressed with that. Nice job, Martin. Nice work. All right, cool. Now, next up, this makes me really pleased. So, this is from Justin in Worcester. Now, Justin sent in his own bike. Basically, he made his own bike completely, and we featured this on a tech show way back. So he designed his own bike and built it and rode it. Now, this is a bit of an update to that bike. So, he says, thanks for featuring my bike on the GMBN tech show again. I thought I would check in to give an update. The bike's still in one piece, and I've got to put it through the paces. Um, it's, it's been through it all from local bike parks, enduro racing. The only changes I've made is I swapped the 140mm fork out for a 160mm fork because the bottom bracket was very low. Um, originally, I did design it around a longer fork. How does it ride? Well, I'd say it rides great, but I can't really say if it rides good or bad since I've not ridden many bikes, uh, especially not any slack 29 so I've got nothing to compare it to. I've offered people I meet on the trails to take it for riding, give me some feedback, but surprisingly, it's hard to find someone willing to ride a homemade bike. I'll tell you what, like, if you think it rides well, chances are it does, because you're clearly, you know enough about bikes to have designed it in the first place. Just looking at the way it sits, it looks like it looks right. I mean, the back end's quite slender on it, but you'll have done your homework, I'm sure. I'll tell you what, I think it's amazing that you've actually just gone out and made your own bike. I think that's really, really cool. And even better than that, you sent us a video as well. So check this out. Um, Justin, thanks for in advance for all this stuff. Uh, if you want to fire me a separate email, drop me an email, please, to um, hellotech at gmbn.com. I'd love to follow this up a bit and find out a bit more about your process. Uh, it's something I'm interested in doing myself. I'd like to know how you've done it because I think this is wicked. I think more people should try and make their own bikes if they can. Um, in fact, actually, we are going to be doing something with uh, bamboo because one of our residents here um, makes bamboo bikes. So why the hell not? Okay, now tech of the week. This is something cool actually was sent to me by someone else in the office. So we spotted this on Kickstarter. So it's a telemetry system for your bike. Now check this out. So it's called the BYB telemetry. And the idea is it enables you to analyze what your suspension is doing on your bike. Now, of course, this is something that you very much see the pros doing, but it does mean it's open to everyone in theory with this kit. So it measures what your suspension's doing, how fast it's working, how the damping's working, how much travel you're using, how dynamic the bike is in certain situations. It measures your speed, how much shock is transmitted through to the handlebars, and all that sort of stuff. 
And it's essentially a system that you could, if you're really into it enough, you could buy one of these yourself at home and you could like infinitely make your suspension work better by understanding what it's doing at all times on the trail. Now this is completely Italian made by Enrico Rodea. Um, is fully handmade in Italy as well as designed and enables accurate analysis on everything your bike is doing. So it's essentially a pro quality system for, well, a prosumer system, I would say that would be. Um, I think this thing looks absolutely amazing and I've never actually ridden anything like this for proper data acquisition and I'd love to know a bit more about this sort of stuff. Um, but as for something like this being on Kickstarter, I think this is awesome. Well, there we go. There's another weekly GMBN tech show in the bag. Uh, let us know what you thought about all the stuff now, especially I'd love to know what you think about that, uh, the rubber willy for a bike. Um, particularly odd products, but actually I think it's pretty useful if you live somewhere wet like here. Um, might look at making a homemade version, in fact, for uh, some sort of video for, for you guys. For a couple more great videos, click down here if you want to see my bike check over on GMBN, actually, and click up here if you want to see everything about setting up clipless pedals, just the, all the rights and wrongs and, and a way to sort of get a good base setting for uh, fast and efficient riding with clipless pedals. As always, give us a huge thumbs up if you love GMBN tech and let us know in those comments what you want us to make and we'll make it.